The narrative begins with our protagonist, Dagon, facing intimidation from bullies in his class. Growing tired of their torment, Dagon finally confronts them and demands that they cease their actions. However, this only serves to enrage one of the bullies, who proceeds to physically assault Dagon. As the altercation unfolds, one of the bully's friends belatedly warns him to stop because a teacher is approaching. Unfortunately, the teacher arrives too soon and appears oblivious to the situation, instructing them to cease their antics and take their seats for the start of the class. Throughout the class, the bullies proceed to affix sticky notes on Dagon's back, bearing the cruel message, I don't have a mom. This deeply devastates Dagon, leaving him feeling abandoned and helpless. Finally, as the class ends and break time begins, another student who enters the classroom discovers the note on Dagon's back and, overcome with empathy, confronts the bully who initiated the attack, engaging in a physical altercation with him. This unexpected act of kindness shocks Dagon and makes him realize his own vulnerability. Determined to become stronger, he decides to undergo rigorous daily training, inspired by the Saitama style of training. Months later, his dedication pays off, and the results of his hard work become evident. A meeting is held to talk about the Ilgins, strong delinquents that are uncontrollable in school, and to control other weaker delinquents. To solve this, a woman suggests a new project that will send a stronger Ilgin to control the Ilgins in a school. The others find it ridiculous, but the chairman asks who is capable of this. Meanwhile, a part-time worker in a convenience store can't concentrate on his studying. He wants to relieve his stress. In an alleyway, a group of bullies is trying to get cash from a kid. The leader orders them to buy him a cigarette, and a pair goes to the convenience store. They try to buy cigarettes, but the part-timer can see that they are high school students. He asks for their IDs, but the two scold him instead. The part-timer asks if they can't understand him. They bring the part-time worker outside, and he tells them that they have three seconds to release him. The boy tries to slap him, but everything just goes dark. The boy wakes up as the girl walks him out. He fainted and stood back up. He tells the girl to call the others. The girl runs away, and the boy tries to confront the part-timer, who is mad. The part-time worker grips the boy's shoulder and warns him not to buy cigarettes again. The other bullies come. A huge bully shows up and tries to slap the part-timer. However, the part-timer slaps the huge bully, making him unconscious. He then tells the others to attack him altogether. They all attack, but the part-timer easily knocks them out. The first bully grabs a bottle, but the part-timer knocks him out. The bully's leader recognizes the part-timer's strength and asks him if he is Quan Da Gun, a legend from the ancient area who wiped out all bullies there. The bully's leader apologizes and Da Gun tells him to tone it down. The leader wakes up the others and they all bow down to Da Gun. Da Gun warns them again and starts lecturing them. After that, a woman approaches him. He is being hired by an educational foundation. Later, Dagon is given the mission to rule over the Ilgins. The woman tells him that they know his background and that this is his chance to make up for his past mistakes. Days later, Dagon attends school. He is introduced to the class and everyone is amazed by his appearance. The bully, Bang Ho Jong, plans to target Dagon. Dagon befriends Kim Min Su and asks him to be a study partner. Just then, Ho Jong smacks Min Su and Dagon gets surprised. Ho Jong orders Min Su to get food for him. Ho Jong claims Min Su will be his new bread shuttle after the previous one dropped out of school. Min Su tries to reason out not going, and Ho Jong gets mad and tells everyone to close their eyes. Ho Jong starts beating up Min Su. Dagon tries to remember the rules given to him by the woman and is unsure what to do now. Ho Jong discovers that Dagon is not closing his eyes and orders him to buy food for him instead. Dagon stands and asks for money. Ho Jong grabs Dagon's head and claims that it should be his money. Dagon sighs and gives Ho Jong a body blow. He follows it up with a punch to the face. Not caring about the rules anymore, Dagon plans to use his fists as the law at school. Everyone gets surprised to see Ho Jong beaten up, especially Jong Min, Ho Jong's buddy. Dagon calls him out, but after seeing Jong Min not moving, Dagon approaches him instead. Dagon dodges all of Jong Min's attacks and receives a blow instead. Jong Min asks for a timeout. Just then, Ho Jong gets back up and grabs a chair. However, Dagon punches him in the face again. With the two bullies down, Dagon tells them to get him food instead. Just then, another bully, No Man Ho, appears who turns out to be the real class leader. Man Ho walks forward as he claims that he doesn't want to fight. However, Dagon can see that Man Ho is taking a kickboxing stance. 
Ho-Jong knows that Man-Ho can win. He orders a classmate to buy popcorn, but the classmate refuses. Dagon glares at him. Man-Ho notices how the students are not scared of Ho-Jong. Man-Ho asks for Dagon's name as he covers his line of sight. Dagon notices that Man-Ho is going for a grenade attack. However, it was just a fake. Dagon's face receives the punch. Just then, Dagon kicks Man-Ho's leg, grabs his collar, and throws Man-Ho to the wall. Man-Ho claims that he will start for real. Man-Ho throws a bag at Dagon and starts throwing punches. Just then, he shouts at someone not to interfere in his fight. However, it is only a normal classmate, and Man-Ho uses this chance to hit Dagon. But Dagon grabs Man-Ho's arm. Man-Ho tries to poke Dagon's eyes, but Dagon punches him instead, knocking Man-Ho unconscious. The bullies and other students get surprised. Dagon tells the two to bring Man-Ho to the infirmary. The two comply, as they know that they are screwed. Meanwhile, the woman from before made the faculty meeting longer so Dagon would have enough time. A female student recognizes the woman as the director of the planning department of the foundation. She wonders what the director is doing at school. Back in the classroom, Dagon is scolding the three bullies in his class. He tells the other students to inform him if they get bullied again so he can reassemble the bullies. In another classroom, a group of bullies heard about Dagon's fight. The leader, Sangho, wants to check it out but looks for his punching bag first. A student appears and Sangbo gives him a body blow. He tells the others to bring more sandbags as a warm-up. Meanwhile, Dagon is thankful he can study and prepare for the qualification exams. He will use this chance to clear his embarrassing past and be reborn. The bullies are now acting cautiously under Dagon's watch. The two bullies ask Manho if he can win if the fight is outside. Jiri, a female bully, calls them pathetic and proceeds to flirt with Dagon. She tries to seduce Dagon, but he is too focused on the notes on the blackboard. Dagon then asks her what the matter is while she is writing. Jiri gives up and tells the bullies to study instead of taking revenge. Manho then remembers that class two and class three leaders are eager to fight Dagon. He worries that they will be under them if Dagon loses to those leaders. Just then, class two's leader, Myung Jung, appears and ridicules Manho. Manho stands and threatens Myung Jung. The two continue arguing until Dagon complains that he can't study because it is too loud. Manho politely goes back to his seat, and Myung Jung notices Dagon. Myung Jung tries to bother him, and Dagon mercilessly grips Myung Jung's fingers. Myung Jung cries in pain. Dagon calmly tells him to come back later after he takes notes. Myung Jung acts like he is leaving and throws a punch at Dagon. Dagon grabs Myung Jung's arm and slaps his lights out. Dagon then threatens them not to mess with anyone again. Dagon is happy that he quickly solved the class 2 problem. The other bullies are in shock and conclude that they are not taking revenge anymore. Just then, class 3's Sangbo and his group arrive and surround Dagon, who decides to take notes next time. Sangbo moves Min Su away and confronts Dagon. Dagon complains that they are loud. Dagon calls Sangbo weak for carrying weaklings with him. Sangbo gets mad and challenges Dagon to a fight after school. Dagon wonders why everyone is welcoming him so quickly. The other bullies worry, and Manho approaches Dagon. Despite Dagon's refusal to talk, Manho continues babbling about Sangbo's fighting prowess. He claims that he wants to help Dagon. Dagon refuses his help. However, Manho continues telling Dagon about Sangbo's attack pattern and boxing history. Sangbo returns to his classroom and looks for sandbags. He then told his sandbags to attack him. The weaker students attack Sangbo, but he quickly knocks them out. He continues beating them up and scolding his sandbags to do things properly. Meanwhile, Dagon is gaining attention in the cafeteria. Ji Inna, the female student from before, finds out that Dagon just transferred in today and realizes something. Another group notices Dagon and hears about his fight. Class 7's Sung Hwa wonders if Dagon can win. Jiri and the bullies join Dagon's table. Another class notices Dagon. Class 8's Dusik claims he wins with his handsomeness. Manho tells Dagon to prepare properly for the fight. He also mentions that his fight with Sangbo is still ongoing. Manho won a fight after he grabbed Sangbo's family jewels. However, Sangbo doesn't admit to everyone that he lost in that way. Students from Class 3 laugh as they pass by Dagon and drop food on him, claiming that they don't like squid. They sarcastically apologize and left. Just then, Dagon grabs the student and claims that it was not a squid he dropped. Everyone in the cafeteria observes the situation. 
Dagon is mad and grabs the bully's arm tightly. Just then, he receives a message from the female director. He remembers that she promised financial support for studying in college. However, he must not act unreasonably or he will go back to his previous life. Dagon, let the bullies go. The observers from other classes are disappointed that no fight happened. Dagon finishes his meal and goes out. He meets the bully again, and Dagon catches him. The bully then tells Dagon a rule. He can't touch other underlings unless you win against the class leader. Dagon brings the bully to a different place and beats him up. Dagon orders him to call his leader. However, the bully tells Dagon that Sangbo is busy hitting sandbags. Dagon gets pissed and moves out. He arrives at Class 3's room and discovers the atrocities of Sangbo. Despite Dagon's presence, Sangbo continues to beat up the other students. Dagon notices that the rest of the class is not doing anything. He remembers his past of being a punching bag by his bully classmates. However, a stronger Ilgin saved him, and he gets inspired by his words. He is not sure, but solving an Ilgin problem needs an Ilgin. Dagon then calls Sangbo weak for hiding behind sandbags. Dagon then asks if he can use Sangbo's underling as his sandbag. Sangbo's underling gets mad and attacks Dagon. Dagon dodges and punches the student's face so hard that it knocks him unconscious. Sangbo gets mad as Dagon asks for more sandbags. Sangbo knows that Dagon is strong. He doesn't have a choice and orders his classmates to move the tables. Meanwhile, the whole school hears about Dagon visiting Class 3's room, including his classmates. They check on the situation and see that the fight is just getting started. Sangbo dashes forward and punches a barrage of jabs. Dagon finds a chance, but Sangbo retreats. Dagon can see that Sangbo's footwork is good. Sangbo continues attacking using his boxing skills. However, Dagon finds another chance and throws a heavy punch at Sangbo. Despite guarding, Sangbo still took the damage. The two both realize each other's skills. Sangbo attacks again, but moves backward after determining Dagon's reach. However, Dagon attacks him with a low kick. Sangbo counters, but Dagon dodges and attacks with a low kick again. Sangbo then falls to his knees. Dagon tells Sangbo to get up. Sangbo gets mad, and Dagon kicks the same area. Sangbo stands back up, and his legs are shaking. Dagon tries to attack with a low kick again. Sangbo gets ready to block it. However, Dagon throws a punch instead. Dagon follows up with Manho's technique and flips Sangbo over. Manho gets impressed, and the other bullies can't believe Dagon has been hitting the same place on Sangbo's leg. Meanwhile, the educational board's chairman is watching the whole fight. Dagon tells Sangbo to stand. However, Sangbo's legs are numb, and he feels humiliated. The observers know that Sangbo's leg is already crushed. A boxer is known to have his steps and fists as his bullets. But Sangbo right now won't be able to use his steps. Sangbo claims it is not yet over. Dagon keeps going and attacks Sangbo. Despite putting up his guard, Dagon can still destroy him. Sangbo gets cornered and Dagon gives him a body blow. His breathing gets harder as Dagon continues beating him up. He continues to put his guard up and curl up. He now looks like a sandbag being punched left and right. Dagon continues beating Sangbo up. The beating continues until Sangbo falls. Sangbo just realized that he can't win. Dagon walks up and tells him to return to his sandbag position. Sangbo won't stand, and everyone now thinks that Sangbo is scared. Sangbo's friend knows that Sangbo is using sandbags that are not resisting because he wants to look stronger. But he is also afraid of getting hit. His friend intervenes and claims that they lost. Dagon wants to hear it from Sangbo. Sangbo embarrassingly admits his loss. Dagon calls him a useless sandbag. Dagon and the rest leave. Sangbo sits on the floor, mad and swearing to fight back soon. The educational board's chairman compliments Dagon's coolness. He gets touched and orders Director Lee to get rid of Dagon's rules. Director Lee reminds the chairman about Dagon's past. The chairman tells her to be quiet and not to worry. Dagon is under their control like a cat catching dirty rat bastards. He wants to let the students go crazy and run around to their heart's content. Everyone in school hears about Sangbo's loss. Class 4's Du Jin hears about it while extorting money from others. Class 9's Sung Hoon thinks the rankings will now change. Class 5's Jizyeok visits Class 6 and plans to absorb their class. He thinks he needs to plan to fight against Dagon. Class 6 Queen Suzy calls the boys childish for playing boss. 
Meanwhile, Dagon is now being followed by his class bullies, and they claim to be family now. Manho warns Dagon that everyone is wary of Dagon now, so he must be prepared. They invite Dagon to an internet cafe, but he notices Director Lee's car. He tells the others to go without him and rides in the director's car. From a distance, Inna watched everything and wondered why the director was with Dagon. She feels like something is being set up. In the car, Dagon tries to make excuses in front of Director Lee and later gives up and asks for the penalties. Director Lee claims that there are no penalties and tells Dagon that there are changes in the plans. The rules will be minimized just like today, and Dagon remembers the situations he made. Dagon asks how Director Lee knows what's happening in school. He then thinks there might be a spy. They later arrive at a house where Dagon will live. Director Lee informs him that the school board is satisfied with his performance. However, violence outside the school is beyond their control, and the teachers don't know about this project. Director Lee leaves a black card for Dagon to use and wishes him luck for tomorrow. Director Lee leaves the room and goes downstairs. She arrives in a room full of monitors. The next day, Dagon is scolded by a teacher for the fights he caused. Jai Yin is watching the whole scene while her teacher is telling her to lead her class. Jai Yin is suspicious of Dagon's actions. In class 6, Ji Siuk receives a report that Sangbo is uncontactable. The other bullies are worried about Dagon, but the leader of class 6, Wen Wong, reacted. The other bully keeps talking until Wen Wong punches him in the face. Wen Wong signals for him to come closer, and he punches the bully again. He warns him to be careful with his words and calls them idiots. Ji Siuk tells Wen Wong not to ignore their worry about Dagon. Wen Wong then reminds Ji Siuk about the trendy auto battles in games. He claims automatic combat is popular because you don't have to use your hands. During class, Dagon notices that Min Su is now wearing glasses. He asks Min Su if his glasses have cameras. Min Su recalls how Ho Jong bullies students with glasses. That's why he stopped wearing one. However, he can now wear it again after Dagon came. Ho Jong sweats in fear and tries to escape. Min Su raises his glasses, and Min Su becomes wary. He is suspicious that someone must be a spy in the classroom. A bully and Ji Yin check on Da Gun and think that he is just normal looking. Ji Yin leaves as she bumps into the bully. Da Gun notices the bully and the bully leaves too. In class 9, Ji Yin's friend asks her if she is interested in Da Gun since she checked him out. Ji Yin gets flustered and her friend agrees that Da Gun is indeed handsome. However, she wants to observe him for a different reason. After class, Jae Yin follows Dae Gun as she remembers her friend reciting all personal information about Dae Gun. She is upset at how she looks like a stalker. She wonders where Director Lee is. She wants to know their relationship and why Dae Gun suddenly transferred to their school. Meanwhile, Won Won meets a group of bullies with a plan to gang up on Dae Gun. Won Won leaves, and later they notice Dae Gun passing by. They follow him, and Dae Gun notices them. He leads them to an alleyway, and Jae Yin wonders why they are following him. She tries to follow them, but the bully she bumped into before, Yang Jin Mo, notices her. She tries to pretend to call someone, and Jin Mo tells the others to go on without him. Jin Mo then assumes that Jae Yin has been following him since this morning because she likes him. He tries to lead Jae Yin somewhere, but she pushes him away. He tries to hurt her, and the others hear a scream. They go and check it out and see that Jin Mo got sprayed with pepper spray. They confront her and threaten her until Dae Gun appears. Jae Yin is surprised. The bullies tell Dae Gun to go away. Dae Gun knows that they have been following him and invites them to move somewhere else. They move somewhere and discover other top bullies from another school. The two tell them to get lost, but Jin Mo tells them that they are moving based on Won Won's order. The two know Won Won and they leave. In a PC cafe, Ji Siuk asks Won Won why he is not confronting Dae Gun. He claims that he ordered others to do things for him. He trusts their strength in fighting. The group surrounds Dae Gun. Jai Yin tries to leave, but Jin Mo tells her to watch how he fights. Jai Yin then decides to watch how Dae Gun fights. Jin Mo tries to act cool and warns him not to spit on him. Jin Mo blows some smoke, and Dae Gun grabs his face. Dae Gun kicks him and follows it up with a hard punch to the face making Jin Mo's head bounce on the ground. The other bullies panic and Dae Gun threatens them. Thinking that Won Won will not let them go, they move forward. They are anxious to start the fight, so Dae Gun attacks them first. He easily punches one and dodges an attack. 
he punches the one behind, knocking the bully out. The remaining two resolve to fight back. However, Dagun kicks the Thesi one and knocks him out. The remaining bully attacks, but Dagun counters and attacks with a knee kick. Dagun stops because he is not supposed to murder the bully. Meanwhile, 1-1 one -one got defeated in the game, and G. Siuk reminded him that automatic combat has limits, and that it is better to control the fight yourself. Just then, 1-1 one -one receives a call and is surprised by the news. Jin Mo wakes up and sees the others beaten up. Dagun tells him to get up, and he starts scolding the group. The bullies from the other school witnessed everything, and they are the ones who are calling 1-1. One 1-1 -one. One -one can't believe Dagun handled four people. Dagun asks Jin Mo, who is one Wong. Jin Mo tries to reason out, but Dae Gun crushes his shoulders. Jin Mo gives up, but he must not tell one Wong. Ji Yin wonders if Dae Gun is a gangster, and Dae Gun notices her. Jin Mo claims that she is following him because she likes him. Ji Yin bursts out in disagreement and calls Jin Mo a gorilla and filth. She leaves and discovers the eavesdroppers. The two got interested in her and left. Dae Gun then orders Jin Mo to lead him to one Wong in school. The next day, Jin Mo messages him that Won Wong is nowhere to be found. Da Gun then goes to the class 6 classroom. Da Gun confronts Jin Mo, and just then, Suzy arrives and tells Jin Mo to shake off the nerd. She then realizes that Da Gun is a famous transfer student and slaps him on the face. She then orders him to speak politely. She tries to haughtily introduce herself while Da Gun is worried about his glasses. She discovers Da Gun without the glasses and gets instantly infatuated. Just then, someone passes by and kicks Jin Mo. Dae Gun is surprised, and Jin Mo is continuously beaten up. Dae Gun asks if he is Won Wong, and the latter introduces himself. Dae Gun claims that he is looking for him. He then notices the onlookers and remembers Director Lee's words. Won Wong asks what Dae Gun needs with him, and Dae Gun throws a punch. However, Ji Siok from Class 5 blocks the punch and asks for a proper conversation. Ji Siok was trying to slam down Da Gun, but he couldn't overpower him. Da Gun calmly compliments Ji Siok's strength. Ji Siok backs away and asks what Dio Gun's reason is for attacking them. Though Won Won knows about it, Won Won gets mad at Jin Mo for selling him out. Jin Mo tries to explain, but Won Won starts beating him up again and calls Jin Mo stupid. Won Won then turns to Da Gun and asks why she should blame him when there is no evidence. Ji Siok calms down Won Won and tells Da Gun that he made a false guess. The bell rings and Da Gun leaves. Won Won commends Ji Siok. Ji Siok confirms that Da Gun is indeed strong. Won Won then contacts someone. During class, Da Gun thinks of a way to confront Won Won, who claims not to be the culprit. The teacher then mentions using justification to cause a war. Outside, the group of bullies is slapped by Won Won. Jin Mo even knows that Won Won can't take on Dae Gun alone. Won Won calls someone named Jung Man. It was the bully with a fade haircut from the other school. Won Won asks Jung Man to gather everyone and leave Dae Gun half dead. Jung Man confirms that Dae Gun is strong, but they have the numbers. The other bully, Jin Wo, asks for Ji Yin because she is his type, and he wants to have his way with her. Won Won promises to bring her in too, and Jin Mo gets worried. Won Won then orders Jin Mo to bring in Ji Yin. He now feels conflicted. Jin Mo then remembers the rule that you can't mess with the other students unless you defeat the class leader. He then reminds Won Won that Ji Yin is in class 9, and Lee Sung Hoon, the leader of class 9, won't sit still. Won Won claims that it doesn't matter because girls don't pay protection money and Won Won doesn't worry because he can devour class 9 anytime. The next day, Jin Mo apologizes to Dae Gun. Dae Gun tries to beat him up but remembers what happened yesterday. He then tells Jin Mo to stand. Jin Mo then offers to treat him with Tiok Baki as an apology. Feeling pity for him, Dae Gun takes his offer. Jin Mo also invites Jai Yin and mentions Dae Gun. Jai Yin's friend, Era, appears and agrees to go. Jai Yin tells Era that they can go eat Tiok Baki together. However, Era wants to hang out with Dae Gun. Jai Yin then agrees and Jin Mo then realizes he just pulled an innocent person into trouble. Other students from the other school, led by Jung Min, move out to fight Da Gun. Da Gun and the others go out, and they find their combination weird. They ask Jin Mo for the restaurant's name, and he gets flustered. Just then, Jung Man and his group appear. Da Gun glares at Jin Mo, and the latter kneels and apologizes. 
Jai Yin gets mad and calls Jin Mo a piece of trash. Jin Mu appears and calls Jai Yin cute. Jung Man laughs at seeing Jin Mo kneeling. Dae Gun tells Jin Mo that he will be dead later. Jin Wo warns the others to be careful of Dae Gun. Just then, a ranker from their school, Byung Gwan, appears and Dae Gun prepares to fight. Byung Gwan talks about how he wants to fight someone strong. However, Dae Gun tries to check where Byung Gwan is looking. The cross eyed Byung Gwan gets mad and attacks, while claiming no one survived after seeing his eyes. Jung Man claims he had a hard time fighting with Byung Gwan before because of his eyes, not knowing where the giant was attacking during a fight. However, Dae Gun is now choking Byung Gwan. Jung Man tells him to tap out, but the giant falls unconscious. Everyone falls silent, and Dae Gun asks if he is supposed to let go if they tap out. He claims they are there to murder him and have even dragged innocent people. They cross the line, and Dae Gun is determined to murder them too. Though they are still confident in their numbers, Dae Gun gives Era his bag and asks the two girls to get away. Dae Gun then asks the bullies to attack him altogether. Some of them surround Dae Gun. Dae Gun then looks for a wall and slams one of them into a nearby shutter door, knocking him out with a punch. The others try to attack, but Dae Gun grabs some dirt and scatters it into them. Dae Gun receives a kick, but overpowers the attacker. He dodges a punch and knocks out the attacker with an uppercut. One tries to stand back up, but Dae Gun kicks him in the face. Jin Mo can't believe that Dae Gun is overpowering them and might be able to defeat the others in the school to be the boss of the first years. Jin Wu orders the others to move out. However, Dae Gun easily knocks them out and calls out Jung Man and Jin Wo. Jin Wu laughs and Jung Man tells him to be careful after seeing Dae Gun's way of fighting multiple people at once. However, more people come and Jung Man claims that Dae Gun will die today. Dae Gun gets worried seeing a lot of them. Just then, someone arrives. They look aside, and Dae Gun sees Min Su. However, Man Ho, Ho Jong, and Jong Min arrive too. They want to help their class boss. Dae Gun asks them how they found him, and Min Su claims that Jin Mo told them. Jung Man gets mad at how Jin Mo switched sides. He claims that Won Won will murder him later, but he will do it now along with Dae Gun. Jin Mo confesses that he didn't like Won Won in the first place and calls them stupid jerks. Man Ho then claims to fight the small fries while Dae Gun focuses on the top two. Jung Man recognizes Man Ho as a boss tier bully. Dae Gun is thankful, but he still can't trust Man Ho and the rest. The enemies even have weapons. Man Ho tells him not to worry and tells the other two to get ready. They bring out a metal stick, brass knuckles, and a wrench. An enemy then remembers a red-haired person known as a legendary weapon master. Manho then challenges the enemy with the baseball bat. He provokes the enemy and analyzes his attack. Manho throws chalk dust and beats up the enemy, knocking him out. Manho picks up the bat and challenges the others. The enemies start attacking and Manho and the others are handling the situation well. Even Jin Mo joins the fight. Dagun then calls out the two bosses. However, Jung Man goes first as he takes on a wrestling stance. Jung Man tackles Dae Gun in surprise, but Dae Gun intercepts him. Jin Wo attacks from behind, and Dae Gun barely dodges. Dae Gun gets caught by Jung Man and claims that this is the end. Dae Gun tries to get away, but Jung Man lifts him for a back suplex. Dae Gun flails around and grabs a wall. Jung Man can't move, and they both fall. Dae Gun can't get away, and the two roll on the ground. The position gets switched, and Dae Gun prepares a punch. However, Jin Wu is there to disrupt Dae Gun. Dae Gun backs off and gets annoyed at how the two work well together. Jin Wu takes a Taekwondo stance and asks Jung Man for support. Jin Wu starts attacking Dae Gun with his kicks. Dae Gun defends and narrows the distance. However, Jin Wu easily widens the distance. Dae Gun sees that Jung Man is getting ready to step in. Dae Gun plans to knock out Jin Wu first and he attacks. Jin Wu tries to fight, but a fist comes flying to his face. He wakes up and sees Jung Man fighting Dae Gun. He realizes he lost consciousness and tries to look for a gap to attack. Dae Gun headlocks Jung Man and seeing Jin Wu coming, he throws Jung Man aside. Jin Wu kicks and Dae Gun knocks off Jin Wu's balance, making him drop to the ground. Dae Gun then attacks with a drop kick and Jin Wu defends. Dae Gun sees a gap and punches Jin Wu's face. Jin Wu falls unconscious again and calls out to Jung Man. Min Su can't believe he is seeing someone like the main character in a webtoon. Dae Gun then finds Jung Man and approaches him. 
Jung Man worries, but he still charges for a tackle. Dae Gun gets tired of seeing his tackle and buries his fist in Jung Man's face. Jung Man flew to the wall, and Dae Gun tackled him. Dae Gun pins him down and would like to finish what he started last time. He then punches Jung Man's face multiple times until Jung Man asks him to stop. Dagon gets mad and chokes Jung Man as he claims to hunt down Won Won today. Dagon knows that they got involved to disrupt the rankings. Manho and the others also finished cleaning up the others. Dagon then tells Jung Man to disappear quietly with his friends. Manho can't believe Won Won is calling other school students. Dagon ignores it for now and thanks them for their help. They blush as they claim to be in the same class. Dagon also thanks Nin Su. As for Jin Mo, he cries, knowing that he will die today. Dagon also checks on the girls, who are fine. Era acts weak, and Dagon catches her. She blushes, and Dagon suggests putting strength in her legs. Dagon apologizes, but Era blames Jin Mo. However, Jae Yin calls Dagon's existence wrong. She calls him a thug and childish for solving everything using his fist. She tells them not to bother normal students and to go to a quiet place to die. Jae Yin and Era leave and the boys can't even refute her words. The two girls then go their separate ways, and Era knows that Jai Yin is sensitive because of her brother. Meanwhile, Dae Gun asks Jin Mo how he wants to die. Jin Mo feels bad and wants to apologize to the other kids first before he dies. Dae Gun claims that there are more bad guys out there who are responsible for this situation. In a hospital, Jai Yin visits her brother. She recalls how bad bullies are, making fighting like a game. She wonders if the bullies will realize what they are doing is a game. That night, Won Wong loses his game with auto combat again, and Jin Mo appears. He asks what happened to Jung Man and the others. Jin Mo glares are Won Wong. Jin Mo walks up to Won Wong and throws a punch. Won Wong fights back, but the other bullies also join in to beat up Won Wong. Everyone gangs up on him. Won Wong runs away, but he trips on something. Jin Mo jumps on him and kicks him to the ground. Jin Mo and his group laugh at Won Wong for running away. Jin Mo claims Won Wong can't do anything on his own. The next day, news of Jin Mo beating up Won Wong spread throughout the school. Jin Mo comes to school high and mighty as the new boss of Class 6. Just when he thinks about what to do with the shuttles, he notices a Dagon entering their classroom. Jin Mo immediately acts polite. Dagon congratulates him but gives Jin Mo two choices, fight as a boss or get hit to end their bad blood. Jin Mo asks to be hit gently. Dagon swings his arm and smashes Jin Mo's face. Jin Mo feels better and lighter now. It was because his soul was flying away. Dagon then tells the others to behave well or else. Dagon has now conquered four classes during his first week. The class one bullies rowdily celebrate Dagon's achievement. Dagon slaps them and agrees to go play games at the PC cafe. Juri also wants to join, and she punches Jong Min for revealing her true intentions. They try to calm down the strongest girl in class one. Meanwhile, Ji Seop tries to get in touch with Won Won. Suzy claims Won Won might have dropped out already, which is highly possible. Suzy finds Dae Gun annoying for being handsome and good at fighting. She suggests making an alliance with the others. Suzy remembers how she unconsciously called Dae Gun Appa. She wants Dae Gun to be bullied as soon as possible. The next day, Jong Min comments that Dae Gun should just focus on studying. It is because Dae Gun's gaming skills suck. Dae Gun then remembers that he has something to do. He goes to class 2 and checks on Myung Jung. He tells the class 2 bullies to behave, and Dae Gun leaves. He checks on class 3 and can see that it is peaceful, with Sang Bo being a regular absentee. Meanwhile, in class 6, Jin Mo tells the other students to be quiet because he is studying. He plans to be a man suited to the top student, Ji Yin. Suzy angrily tells him to keep things to himself. Suzy is still stressed out about Da Gun. Suzy explains to Jin Mo that it was a misunderstanding when she called Da Gun Appa. Just then, Da Gun arrives looking for Jin Mo. Look at Suzy who is blushing so hard. Da Gun gives Jin Mo some reminders and leaves. Jin Mo returns to Suzy and the girl asks him to remove his glasses. Suzy takes out her frustrations on Jin Mo. She ordered the others to beat up Jin Mo. Ji Seok comes and tells her that he is currently thinking about the alliance. Ji Seok tells her to get help from her brother instead. She doesn't want to because Dae Gun might die for real. She just wants to step on Dae Gun someday. She coerces Ji Seok into making an alliance with the other class's heads. 
Good thing Ji Seok has a good relationship with the others, and he must do this to kick out Da Gun. Meanwhile, Director Lee reports to CEO Lee about Da Gun's progress. He is impressed by the progress and tells Director Lee to inform Da Gun to work harder. In the school's gym storage, the other first year class heads gather. There's Ji Seok, Class 8's Du Sik, Class 7's Sung Hwa, Class 4's Du Jin, and Class 9's Sung Hoon. Ji Seok asks them about the alliance. Sung Hwa refuses because he doesn't care about the ranks, but he won't lose to anyone. Du Sik asks if Ji Seok fears Da Gun after 1 1 got called. They continue to play around, and Ji Seok comments on how it was a bad idea to gather. However, Sung Hoon agrees with the alliance. He tells the others to listen to Ji Seok's thoughts first. Ji Seok didn't expect the king of study bugs to agree. Ji Seok then mentions how Daegun has devoured four classes already and the ranks are being toppled. Sung Hwa because he is not interested in ranks. Du Jin leaves because he doesn't want to share the prize money. Du Sik also leaves to practice and tells Ji Seok to think things through again. The two argue, but Sung Hoon intervenes. He tells them to postpone their showdown and listen to his story first. Later, Du Jin loses his money to a classmate. He tries to act calm but ends up slapping his classmate. He orders his classmate to stand up, and he snatches the money his classmate won from their game. The classmate gets mad and tries to contact someone. Meanwhile, Ji Seok tells Suzy that the alliance means nothing for now, and he has decided to observe things for now. In a flashback, Sung Hoon reminds Ji Seok and Du Sik that it is collection day soon. He also exclaims that Du Jin and Sung Hwa are money-hungry leaders. He suggests observing Da Gun's intentions first, and Sung Hoon is sure that conflict will happen soon. Suzy is stressed out because there is nothing that can be done. Later, Du Jin, who is looking for more money, plans to take down Da Gun, who is in charge of four classes. He calculates how much he can take, but his right-hand man suggests something. Show their fight on Toto, a betting site. Du Jin likes the idea and plans to train. Just then, some seniors appeared, and it was Du Jin's classmate who called them. Du Jin laughs at his senior for being a muscle for hire. The huge senior hits Du Jin, but Du Jin receives the punch with his face. Du Jin fights back until his senior falls. Du Jin hits his senior's face and offers to shred his fat. Du Jin claims that his classmate should have given him the money instead of hiring people. Du Jin then starts attacking the others. Despite fighting two huge men, Du Jin is treating them like punching bags. Du Jin asks for his classmate's money and chases after him. However, his senior hits him with a wooden bat. Du Jin's friend helps and Du Jin knocks out his senior. He looks around, but his classmate is gone. The next day, Daegun arrives at school and Jong Nin calls him over. Manho asks Daegun if he plans to take over all the first year classes. Ho Jong claims that it is what they are seeing. Manho reminds Daegun that he will receive money from four classes soon. Daegun doesn't know about that, and the three bullies are too stunned to speak. Jung Myung appears and explains that they are collecting money from every class as protection money. The money goes into the pocket of the class boss, and Jung Myung warns Daegun that people will be after him. Manho appreciates his explanation but wonders why he came. Jung Myung asks Daegun to take care of his class's money and offers his strength. However, Dagun slaps him and claims that he won't collect money. Jong Min informs him that some shares are also offered to the second years and then to the third years. Stopping the collection means going against the whole school. Dagun realizes the huge risk, but he remembers that it is his job to stop this issue. He tries to leave, but Jin Mo comes and tells him that someone wants to meet him. He later meets Suzy. Suzy tells him to follow her while she is still being nice. Meanwhile, a second-year crew leader, Jaak, and his number two, Gong Myung, are asking their classmates to pay on time. Du Jin, who is with them, learns how much they get. He gets excited now about hunting Da Gun and taking over the first-year classes. Suzy tells Jin Mo to go away. Suzy confronts Da Gun and tries to be intimidating. However, she can't look straight into his eyes. She tries to explain the Appa matter, and Da Gun knows that she was referring to her real brother. She exclaims that there is nothing more than that, and Daegun removes her hands from his collar. Suzy blushes as Daegun cuffs her hands. She tries to get away, and Daegun tells her to call Ba Sukyuk, Suzy's brother. Suzy refuses because Daegun might die. Daegun won't let her go unless she agrees. Just then, Du Jin and the second years arrive. Jock tells Daegun to stop the vulgar scene on the sacred school grounds. 
Dagon calls him Baldi, and Ja gets mad. Dagon suddenly remembered how his convenience store boss was depressed over losing hair. He apologizes to Jog and Dujin laughs out loud. Gong Men claims that Jog is really experiencing hair loss. Jog tells them to go away before he stops showing mercy. However, Dagon tells them to leave instead because they got in the area first. Susie calls him crazy. Jog then crunches his fists. Just then, Susie calls her brother. Gong Men stops Jog and tells him that Susie doesn't call anyone Appa unless it is Bak Su Hyuk. Su Hyuk confirms that he will come and the call drops. Susie tells the others that she got Dagon first. The two go away, and it is obvious that Jock is angry despite saying he is okay. Jock tells Du Jin to deal with Dagon later. However, the money-hungry Du Jin is hyped up. He runs toward Dagon and Susie. Dagon grabs Susie and dodges Du Jin's kick. Dagon gets confused and Du Jin continues attacking him senselessly. Dagon slaps Du Jin, but that just makes Du Jin excited. Dagon needs to widen the distance to protect Suzy. Gong Meng runs to stop Du Jin, thinking that he can hurt Suzy. Du Jin continues attacking Dagon. Dagon falters and Du Jin uses this chance to kick Dagon hard. Du Jin asks why Dagon is only dodging. Dagon can now see that Suzy is on the sidelines already. Du Jin haughtily approaches him. Dagon punches him, but Du Jin immediately puts on a blocking stance. However, Dagon hits his sides too. He knocks down Du Jin with a kick. Du Jin calls Dagon brutal. Dagon asks if Du Jin's arms are alright. He claims his arm is alright, but it seems like it is not. Dagon then takes off his school jacket. Suzy suddenly gets flustered and tells him to keep in mind that he is in a crowded place. They are suddenly surrounded by an audience and the girls are giggling over Dagon. Du Jin tells him that they need to stop for now because a real event will happen soon. Du Jin leaves as he pushes the girls aside. Dagon tells Gong Myung to go for him together next time because it is annoying for him to beat them up separately. Gong Myung gets mad, but Jock stops him. The two boys then leave. Suzy calls Dagon crazy for provoking the second year leaders. She scolds him for being reckless but later thanks Dagon for saving her. Dagon apologizes for trying to hug her and Suzy gets flustered. Dagon then asks for Su Hyuk, but Suzy quickly tells him that it was a lie to fend off the second years. Suzy wonders why Dagon wants to meet her brother. Well, Dagon just wants to beat up Su Hyuk. However, Suzy tells him that he will die if he fights her brother. She then tells her to solve the issues of the first graders first. Suzy leaves and Dagon is confused about her actions. Suzy continues to think that she doesn't like Dagon at all. Meanwhile, Du Jin returns to his classroom and claims that he likes how strong Dagon is. He calls the class president and asks for Du Han's address. It was his classmate who served as his piggy bank. He also orders the president to collect the protection money by this week, even though it must be the next. Du Jin swears that he won't get caught by the others. The president reminds him of the rules. Du Jin suddenly played rock, paper, scissors, and when he won, he flicked the class president's forehead. He asks for another round. Dagon remembers how Du Jin can endure his hits. He is happy to discover someone he can beat up a lot. That night, Du Han waits for the people he hired. Just then, Du Jin appears and grabs his face. Du Jin drags Du Hyun towards the fence, but suddenly stops right before they get hit. Du Jin asks if the amusement ride is amazing and asks for one more ride. The next day, Class 1's three bullies are having a hard time with math. On the other hand, Jin Mo wins against Da Gun during their English words quiz with Min Su. Juri then tells Da Gun that she was giving hints about the place where he can do Jiu Jitsu with her. However, the answer was bed. Dagon is really a chick magnet. Minsu wonders how Dagon loses to Jinmo when he always sees him trying to study. Just when they are having fun with their study session, Du Jin enters the classroom, surprising everyone. He wants to talk to Dagon and tries to kick Jinmo out of his seat. However, Jinmo doesn't want to be seen as a loser. He stands up to Du Jin, but Du Jin just slaps Jinmo. Du Jin then suggests playing rock, paper, scissors. Jin Mo loses and tries to leave. However, Du Jin slaps him as the game's punishment. Dagon apologizes that he can't fight because he is studying. Du Jin suggests a game instead, hitting the coin on the book game with certain conditions. Meanwhile, Sung Hwa and Gong Myung meet and discuss the money collection. They also talk about Dagon. Sung Hwa claims that Dagon is still hiding his real skills. 
Gong Meng asks about Du Jin, and Sung Hua confirms that Du Jin is a strong person. He had flexibility and high endurance. Du Jin entered a gym before without knowing anything and defeated everyone there. Sung Hua claims that an amazing guy like Du Jin won't lose. However, Du Jin just lost the game he suggested. Du Jin asks for another round, but Dae Gun complains that they have done it a lot of times already and offers to make Du Jin the winner instead. Dagon also agrees with Dujin's condition. Dojin gets flustered but suddenly thinks that he was only there for the condition. Dujin then reminds Dagon to meet up on Friday. Dagon tells Dujin to take care of his arms. Manho asks if Dagon is really sure about his decision, and he claims that it is suspicious to fight in front of the second years. Dujin actually suggested having the second years watch them fight. Dajun can only see this chance to attack the second years too. Just then, Du Hien enters and asks Dae Gun to beat up Du Jin, but he must also lose to Du Jin. Jiri asks for Du Hien's motive. Du Hien informs Dae Gun that their fight will be on Toto, a gambling platform. Du Hien wants Dae Gun to lose so he can get his credit card back from Du Jin. Jiri then confirms Du Hien's words again. She asks if she can break Du Hien's neck. Jiri lashes out at Du Hien, and Manho tries to keep her in place. Dagon asks what he will get in return and claims that it is impossible to lose against Du Jin. However, Dagon orders Du Hien to help him with English till he can beat Jin Mo. Jiri tries to appeal to Dagon, but Dagon tells Du Hien to start today. Dagon doesn't get involved with anything outside of school. After school, Du Hien talks to Dagon about beating up Du Jin. He suggests betting on the fight, however, Dagon doesn't have money. They arrive at a loan shark office where Du Jin made Du Hian borrow money, and Dae Gun figures out Du Hian's plan. Dae Gun feels like the people inside are gangsters instead of loan sharks. Meanwhile, Du Jin is happy that he got some money from his class. His friends are worried because Du Jin broke the rule. He claims he needs to go up. Dae Gun goes to the loan shark office and meets a man. The man complains about how students are borrowing money nowadays. He tells Dagon to go inside. The man asks for his age, and Dagon stutters to answer. He tries to leave by making an excuse, but the man stops him. He finds Dagon suspicious. He grabs Dagon and asks what family he is from. However, Dagon fights back and tells the man again that he will now leave. The man grabs an ashtray and tries to smack Dagon with it. Dagon quickly slaps it away and hits the man's head, making him unconscious. He thinks of leaving, but Dagon notices the ledgers on the table. He sees Du Hien's transaction and finds an interesting record. He notices President Lee at his school. Just then, voices can be heard coming. Dagon walks toward the door and sees the men. He claims the man is sleeping now, and he excused himself. Dagon walks away as the men try to wake up their big brother. They can't wake him up, and he finds it weird. Dagon starts running fast. Night comes, and Dagon regrets poking a beehive. He wonders if he can ask Director Lee about President Lee, but decides to focus first on Du Jin. He remembers that his fight is on Sunday, and sees that the weather will be rainy on that day. Friday comes, and Du Jin is ready to fight Dagon. He tells everyone to follow him, and Du Jin opens the closed school auditorium. Class 7's Sung Hua is already inside, preparing everything. Du Jin is excited and asks where the others are. Just then, a bully crew from second grade, led by Jaak, arrives. Sung Hua prepared a space for him to watch the fight. Jaak asks for Dagon's whereabouts. Meanwhile, Dagon is still on his way and tells the others not to follow him. Manho tells Dagon that they got his back, well, with a bag full of weapons. Manho prepared more than usual. Jong Min wants to inform Dagon about Du Jin's fighting style, but Dagon already figured it out after a punch. Dagon receives a message and tells him to go without him. At the auditorium, Ja confirms if Dagon will really come. Du Jin claims Dagon must be scared, and Manho calmly tells him that Dagon is not like that. Gong Nung agrees to wait for a while. Zhang Min can't believe he is seeing the road in between crew's top five executives. Just then, another second grader crew arrives, the sacred pedigree. Ma Jai Siok, the leader, wonders why they need to go this far for a first year fight. Class 9's Sum Hoon claims that Dagon is not ordinary. Jai Siak then wonders where Dagon is. Manho and Jong Min get anxious. Time passes by and Du Jin slams his phone out of frustration. He complains that Dagon is still not coming. He is itching for a fight. 
Jok agrees that they need entertainment. Just then, Du Jin calls out to Manho. Zhang Nan worries, but Manho is ready to fight for Da Gun. Sun Hua disagrees because they need the main fighter to be in his best condition. The battle freak Du Jin gets mad at him. Just then, someone arrives. They thought it was Da Gun, but it was just Zhang Myung who expects Da Gun to win. He plans to bet on Da Gun to make huge money. Du Jin asks him if he was recently Class 2's leader. Jung Mian confirms that he already swore allegiance to Dae Gun, and Du Jin punches him out of nowhere. Du Jin smiles as he grabs Jung Mian and throws him away. Du Jin runs forward and kicks Jung Mian. Manho panics, but the second year students look satisfied. Du Jin continues beating up Jung Mian. Meanwhile, someone got photos of President Lee and another person. It looks like the previous Lone Shark office was raided. Dojin finished up Jung Mian and Dagon arrives complaining about how impatient Dojin is. Everyone welcomes him, and he apologizes for being late. Du Jin blames Dagon for being late, and his friend is beaten up. Dagon wonders if Jung Myung is really his friend as he removes his coat. He throws the coat to Du Jin, and Dagon easily beats up Du Jin's friend. Dagon claims he is now done warming up with his friends. He claims he will trash Du Jin today. Jock tells him to get rid of the ones lying on the floor. Du Jin then claims that none of his dolls from when he was younger left. He enjoyed tearing them apart. He charges forward as he pushes aside his friends who are being dragged away. Dagon dodges Du Jin's attack. Du Jin continues attacking with punches, but Dagon is only dodging. Du Jin complains about Dagon, who is only dodging and not attacking, and whines to fight him. Jin Mo and Zhang Min wonder why Dagon is doing nothing. Min Su claims that Dagon is analyzing Du Jin first. Based on Dagon's previous fights, he avoids the initial attacks. But after some time, after he analyzes his opponents, Dagon will counterattack. Dagon dodges Du Jin's punch and counters with a body blow. Du Jin tries to fight back, but Dagon trips his leg and uses this chance to punch Du Jin's face. Du Jin immediately gets back up and furiously charges at Dagon. Dagon kicks his knee and punches his face again. Du Jin gets unconscious and wakes up immediately. However, Dagon continuously kicks and slaps him. Dagon blows Du Jin away with a kick. Gong Meng can't believe Dagon sent a weightlifter flying with a kick. Du Jin gets back up as he complains about how painful it is. The others are amazed that Du Jin is still fine. Dagon commends his endurance and hopes he can endure his attacks for a long time. Du Jin can't believe that Dagon is not warmed up yet. Du Jin claims he isn't in charges toward Dagon. Du Jin fakes an attack, and Dagon finds it cute. However, no matter how strong Du Jin's attacks are, the result is still the same. Dagon punches Du Jin in the face. He also follows it up with another body blow. Sung Hoon can see that Dagon is strong, but he has more to show. Manho now understands how Dagon already examined Du Jin during the coin game. Dagon continues to dodge and hit Du Jin at the same time. Manho claims that Du Jin has a limitation. During the coin game, it relies on skills. Analyze the coin's position and use your skill to aim and control your power. However, Du Jin only relies on his senses of the moment to strike with ignorance, and it is the same with the fight right now. Du Jin only swings his punches according to his senses using his physical strength and high physical ability. But his opponent right now is analytical, and that opponent is Dagon. In a flashback, a classmate teaches a frail-looking Quan Dagon how to win in the coin game. He tells Dagon to stare at the coins and aim properly without hitting them. Back to the present, Dagon is slapping Du Jin on the same cheek. Du Jin faltered, but he charged again. Dagon finds him simple-minded encounters. He finds Du Jin like a moth flying toward a flame. Some of the second graders can't believe Du Jin is losing. Sung Hoon agrees that Du Jin is strong, but his opponent this time is ridiculously stronger than him. This is a chance for him to gather data, but Dae Gun hasn't shown enough yet. He hopes Du Jin will fight harder. Du Jin wonders why he can't touch Dae Gun. Dae Gun provokes Du Jin. Meanwhile, Ji Seok asks Suzy if she is worried about her treasure. He tells her that Sung Hoon informed him that the second graders also gathered to watch the fight. Suzy gets mad and tries to leave, making Jai Seok wonder if she will check on Dagon. A man laughs while playing and claims that Suzy likes Dagon. A woman on the other side wins and sees the man knocked out. They see Suzy leave, 
and they wonder why she is acting weird. Susie worries that Dagon will go to a fight and might offend the second graders. She throws her umbrella and runs. Back in the auditorium, Do Jin slaps himself, and the second grade finds him weird. However, Do Hyun claims that Do Jin is testing his hand's taste. He knows it from their previous coin game. He hopes Do Jin will lose. Do Jin is still confused about why he is the only one getting hit. He charges forward and tries to attack Dagon while begging to hit him even once, but Dagon kicks him away. He stands back up and kicks Dagon, but Dagon dodges it too. Dagon trips his leg and Dujin crashes down. He immediately gets back up to keep attacking, but Dagon always dodges and counterattacks. Dujin only wishes to hit Dagon once. Dagon counters, and all Dujin can do is endure. He goes for another punch, but Dagon's fist is already on his. He bleeds as he wonders why he can't touch Dagon. He kneels on the floor, feeling ashamed. In his head, he plays a coin game, but he can't hit the notebook. He continues hitting it until Dagon stops him and tells him that he is not hitting it correctly. Dagon grabs Du Jin's head and slams him on the desk. Dagon thanks Du Jin because he is now warmed up. The second graders are surprised, as are the other first graders, when Du Jin's bloody face is planted on the floor. In a flashback, his coach is advising Du Jin not to exercise based on his gut feeling. Du Jin tells him to shut up and asks him to fight. Du Jin later wins and claims he can be powerful with his gut feeling alone. In his head, he is still struggling with the coin game. He decided to destroy the whole game. Du Jin stands back up and tells Dagon that he is just getting started. Dagon tells him to wipe his blood first. Du Jin claims he has already figured out everything. He plans to make his body not follow his mind. Samwa claims that a person can surpass their limits in that way. Du Jin takes a stance and charges toward Dagon. However, Dagon easily hits Du Jin, making his head bounce on the floor. He claims he is already warmed up and is not interested in Du Jin anymore. Everyone gets surprised, and Sung Hua claims Du Jin is only human. Dagon then starts asking the second graders about the money collection. He declares not to continue the money collection, or he will blow up their heads. Jock starts explaining that the protection money makes the students feel free. However, Dagon interrupts him and asks for a fight. Ja gets offended, and Gong Ming tells Dagon to at least devour all first year classes first. Jai Seok comments on how disrespectful Dagon is and calls him stupid. He claims it is hard to explain with words, so Dagon must learn it with his body. Members of the Sacred Pedigree crew stand up, and Jai Seok orders them to beat up Dagon in a holy way. Manho tries to help, but Dagon tells him not to. They encircle Dagon, and he finds them annoying. He beats them up alone, and the second graders can't believe what they are seeing. A student tries to hit Dagon with a chair, but someone pushes the student aside with a slap. Everyone is surprised to see Du Jin getting up. A second grader attacks Du Jin, but Du Jin easily knocks him out with one hit. Du Jin coughs as he claims that it is not over yet. Dagon then took a stance for the first time. Sun Hua can see that it is not a typical pose, and Manho realizes that all that Dagon has shown is just a joke. Du Jin is totally out of his mind and claims his body is insanely light right now. He charges toward Dagon as he is sure that he can defeat him now. Dagon, on the other hand, clenches his fist and plans to finish things with one shot. He reaches out his fist toward Du Jin and Du Jin notices how a gun is pointed at him. Du Jin is sent flying by Dagon's insanely powerful punch. Du Jin falls flat on the floor. Jaok saw something different. Jai Siak thought he heard a gunshot. Sung Hoon wonders what happened. Dagon announces that it is now over. Meanwhile, a man in a suit burns the photos of President Lee with a gangster. He sees Dagon's photo and keeps it. As Dagon completely destroys Dojin, the second year realizes that he wasn't using his full power all this time and was only toying with Dojin. Dagon confidently claims that with this shot, Dojin will no longer be able to stand up again which makes everyone more shocked. Dagon looks at one of Dojin's friends and orders him to get rid of Dojin immediately. While the guy carries Dojin away, one of the second year leaders, Mr. Baldi, Jahak, wonders if Dagon is Azura. Jahak remembers how the person Azura was. Azura's name literally translates to demonic titan, so it's quite clear that he looked like one. Gongmang slaps Jahak back to reality, asking him what they should do with the transfer student Dagon. Gong Miang proposes to beat some sense into the arrogant brat. 
but after seeing a glimpse of Dagon's true powers, Jahak doesn't want to get involved. He explains that Dagon's spirit lacks severe self-discipline, which supposedly makes him stronger than everyone else sitting in the gym. While the second-year students are confused about what to do, Dagon eagerly waits to take on the next person. On the other side, Susie rushes to get in a cab and gets verbally harassed by the driver. She doesn't give it much attention, as she is the sister of Big Shot, telling the driver to rush to the location quickly. Since no one from the second year has enough courage to step against him, Dagon decides to choose a person to beat himself. But right then, the director calls him, asking him where he is. She reminds him that he must only do what she tells him and reveals something else to him. Afterward, the director ends the call and curses Dagon for going to Il Su's office. Dagon tells the second year students that he must go somewhere urgently, telling them that this is their mercy for today. The gang tags along with Dagon, with a new member joining them. The second year students are still in shock that Dagon is that strong, but Sun Wei is sure that he can beat him with his delicate techniques. He claims to have done gruesome training to complete his techniques, and so he thinks that he has a shot against him. Before Dagon leaves, he turns back, warning the second year students that the person who will collect money next week will die at his hands. Dagon then opens the door and bumps into Susie. As she rushed all the way here only because she was worried for Dagon, she asked him if he was okay. But upon seeing him unharmed even after being in a room with so many second year students, she's amazed. Dagon notices that Susie is all wet, so he subtly offers his overcoat to her. He makes Susie put on the coat, which makes her blush and even compliments her looks. But that part is just Susie's dream. The second year students realize that Dagon is close with Susie, and that's mortifying for them as she is the sister of the big shot, so they can no longer harm Dagon with simple tactics. On the way back, Dagon remembers that Mind Jiang is still in the gym, knocked out, so he tells Ho Jing to get him back. Somewhere else at an abandoned warehouse, a gangster boss beats up a guy for spying, and his underling He Jin, who previously targeted Dagon and the president of Dagon's school as well, takes his leave on personal business suddenly and promises to be back soon. Dagon enters a building while talking with the director and tells her that there is a mysterious number that is sending his own pictures. He thinks the mysterious stalker lives here, so he goes back to check it out and finds several gangsters scouring through the documents. Dagon hangs up the phone and without any further ado starts taking down the gangsters one by one. The mysterious guy from before, Heejin, steps up, telling the gangsters to stop trying to pick a fight against Dagon and revealing that they are old acquaintances. Heejin takes Dagon outside, explaining that he is the mysterious stalker as well. Heejin explains that he tried to meet with him earlier, but when he reached the place he saw that Dagon had already made a mess. Heejin then comes to the main issue, telling Dagon that the guys who Dagon beat earlier were trying to dig up information about their organization. While he was working on that, he found Dagon's information in the process, so he thinks that those gangsters suspected Dagon of being a member of Heejin's organization and dug up more information about him. Heejin tells him not to worry anymore and offers him a cigarette, but Dagon can't smoke as he has reverted to being a high schooler. Heejin doesn't ask how or why he is going to school, but reveals that he knows Dagon is linked with the director, Lee, and warns him not to trust her. But Dagon explains that it's nothing like that and he is just trying to graduate like a normal person and live a normal life. He gets up, saying that he is glad that he ran into Heejin, but doesn't want to meet him ever again. Then he takes his leave as he needs to study so he can beat Ho Jing in the English word quiz. The next day, Dagon meets up with the gang of Class 1A, saying that he needs their help to memorize English words, but they think that he should rest as it's the weekend and chill with them. Manho congratulates Dagon on beating Dojin and gives him a pen as a gift. Dagon thanks Manho for being so considerate and promises to study hard with the pen. But Manho reveals that the pen is a weapon to use on the opponent's head. Manho then goes ahead to play fastball, inviting Dagon, so he decides to have fun for a while. Manho tests out his new bat and hits a home run instantly. He tries to teach Dagon the technique of squinting the eyes to hit a home run, but he isn't interested in any stupid things. Ho Jing's turn to practice comes up next and he trains his endurance by getting hit on his body. He wants to be the man who can take Dagon's hit, and that gives him the motivation to increase his durability. Dagon's turn comes up next, and he acts like a lady magnet once again. Some local goons decide to mess with Manho, but upon seeing Dagon, they quickly fall back like cowards. Somewhere else, Dojin gets chased by the gangsters he previously took a loan from for betting. He starts to fight back, 
and Heejin shows up out of nowhere, knocking him out instantly. Dojin doesn't show up at the school the next day, but none of his classmates are worried for him, rather they are happy now that they can lead a peaceful life from now on. One of Dojin's lackeys tries to become the substitute bully, but Doyan threatens to call Dagon and makes him apologize. Apparently, Dagon gave Doyan a special mission to investigate the bullies and report them back to him. So Doyan created the Bully Violence Committee for better execution of reporting bullies and recruited the people from each class who got saved by Dagon. Doyan, of course, becomes the chairman of this committee and discusses the evil deeds of the bullies. Doyan notices that the members from classes 7 and 8 are missing, so he wonders what's wrong with them. He returns home thinking about bullying and goes to bed to get a good night's sleep after finally achieving a long-awaited peaceful life. But Dojin haunts him in his dreams, showing how much trauma Doyan has been through. In class 9, Juyan, the top student, sees a bully making noise for no reason, so she complains, telling him to get out of the class. The bully gets mad seeing Juyan's arrogance, but the class leader, Sung Hoon, saves her by taking him out and beating him for ruining the class's peace. After teaching him a good lesson, Sung Hoon returns to his fake baby boy persona and calls the other class leaders for a meeting. They meet at a warehouse where they discuss how to take down Dagon. They know that Dagon has threatened to murder anyone who will collect money next week and that even the second graders didn't dare oppose him. Sungkun thinks that Dagon has crossed the line by forbidding the other bullies to collect protection money and has turned the whole school into his enemy. Ji Seok doesn't want to collect money as he wants the second graders to deal with Dagon first. But Sungkun reveals that he has already come up with a plan to handle Dagon before the money collection. Meanwhile, Suzy comes to return Danyan's clothes, which makes the other love interest, Juri, jealous, and they begin to shoot looks at each other with their eyes. Manho asks Dagon if he intends to beat everyone if they collect money, as he thinks Dagon won't be able to take on the third graders as he hasn't finished taking over the first graders yet. Even if he must fight against the entire school, that is what Dagon must do to complete the project Bully in Charge of Bullies. The collection week finally comes, and Dushik enters the class 8 room looking for the class president and asks if he has collected the money. But seeing the negative response, Dushik humiliates him by pouring cola on his head and reminding him to make the deposit by the next day. On his way out, Dushik gets a text from an undisclosed person, Jihu, asking for money, so he gets more impatient. Ji Seok gets scared thinking that a monster like Dagon will come after him, but he must collect money as he needs to save himself from the seniors, so it's like a lose-lose situation for him. Meanwhile, Sung Hoon announces that he will not be collecting protection money, but clearly, he has ulterior motives behind such a decision. The Class 8 president reports to Doeyan that Dusik wants him to collect protection money, so Doeyan decides to tell it to Dagon. Meanwhile, Dusik says that he has been having some problems collecting the money because of Dagon but promises to figure everything out himself. Sung Hoon overhears everything and asks who he was talking to. But Dusik is, of course, not revealing that, so Sung Hoon asks if he has collected the protection money already. Both lie about having done their part. Sung Hoon even claims to have a clear plan so that Dagon can't get involved anymore. Meanwhile, Doyoung goes to Class 1 to report to Dagon about Dusik collecting money. So Dagon leaves immediately to break Dushik's head. In 8th grade, the number 2 bully Cha desires to become an internet celebrity even though he's super ugly, on both the inside and the outside. The class president also makes up some stuff to please Cha when he despises his very existence. But then, the president accidentally calls Cha ugly, but he doesn't even take it as an insult since he thinks so highly of him. Dagon enters the room looking for Dusik and becomes a lady magnet once again. The girls in the room request that he join them in a TikTok video, but Dagon has no time for that and decides to leave and come later when Dusik comes again. The president wants Dagon to beat Cha, so he starts to instigate Cha and gets beaten up for it. Dagon doesn't get involved because he doesn't understand what is going on. He sees that the girls are filming but still goes to stop Cha, telling him not to raise his hands just because he got verbally abused. This makes Cha more infuriated, and he brags about being a celebrity to belittle Dagon. Dagon understands that Cha is only doing this to impress the girls, so he crushes Cha's fist, telling him to sit down quietly before things get out of hand. The girl filming accidentally drops her phone, so Dagon finally sneaks in a punch on Cha, knocking him out completely. Dusik enters the room and sees both Cha and the president beaten up, so he blames Dagon for it, and Dagon happily takes the blame to pick up a fight. 
The girls clear up the misunderstanding by saying that Dagon isn't involved in this mess, so Dusik asks, what's his business here? Dagon doesn't explain and tells Dusik to come outside to talk about something. Dusik gets worried as Dagon shouldn't be here since Sung Hoon told him that he handled the situation. Meanwhile, Sung Hoon goes to the place where Doyan holds his bully resistance meeting to initiate his evil scheme. Back in the class 8 room, Dagon offers to forgive Dusik if he gives him back the collection money. Dusik reveals that he has already used all the money, so Dagon again offers to give him one day to collect the money. He then proceeds to leave, but then Dusik attacks him out of nowhere with an overhead kick. The girls think of filming everything, thinking it will be great for their TikTok content. Dusik again goes for a kick on Dagon's head, but he dodges the attack. He knows that the girls are filming, so he looks for an angle to hide Dusik's face while also evading all Dusik's attacks. Dagon cunningly takes out Cha in the middle of the fight to make him clash with the girl, so that she can't film anymore. Then he finally uses the opportunity to throw one deadly punch at Dusik's gut, making him kneel immediately. With the atmosphere completely changed, Dagon again tells Dusik to bring the collected money back by tomorrow and threatens to smash his beautiful face if he doesn't. Dagon then goes to class 5, looking for their boss, G. Siok. There, G. Siok is only having fun with his friend, Sujun, when he learns that Dusik got beaten by Dagon and that he's on his way here. G. Siok wonders why, as Sinonhun promised to solve the issue himself. Meanwhile, Sunhun forces Do Han to make him the chairman of the Bully Violence Committee and promises that he wants to get rid of the bullies too to fix the school's atmosphere. G. Siok decides to run away from the school, but the Grim Reaper has already arrived at his doorstep to make him feel sorry for his sins. G. Siok can't let his reputation be torn apart in front of his friend, so he asks Dagon to talk somewhere outside. G. Siok leads Dagon somewhere far away, away from any crowd, looking for a moment to attack him when he's off guard. He even considers using a weapon, but that's too cowardly for a class leader. He then realizes that he has no chance of winning against Dagon, so he decides to do what Dagon asks of him. Now that Dagon has dealt with classes 5 and 8, he only needs to take over classes 7 and 9 before dealing with the second graders. Dagon then wonders if any of the bullies lied about not collecting protection money, as that would become quite troublesome to handle. Meanwhile, Dusik comes to Sumkum's classroom, pushing people away, and asks him why he didn't do anything to Dagon. G. Siok also comes there to ask the same question. Sumkum explains that he doesn't consider the other class leader on the same level as he is and mocks the two, calling them losers. Dusik doesn't take his insult lightly and rushes to attack him. But he cleanly sweeps Dusik away and then goes to punch G. Siok next. G. Siok tries to fight back, but he is clearly not at the same level as Sumkum. Sung Hoon then proceeds to lock the room and starts beating the two of them brutally. On the other side, the Class 7 boss, Sung Wa, is testing their newest baseball team recruit's fighting skills at the gym. He considers the newest recruit weak and heartlessly doubles the training sessions. Sung Hoon reveals to Ji Siuk and Do Sik that he plans to make Dagon the boss, as he thinks bullies like them don't deserve to be at the top. And that was his plan all along. While returning home, Dagon notices that he is being followed so he leads them to a corner to see who it is. But to his surprise, it's just one of his admirers, Era. She explains that she only followed him after seeing that he was being followed by another person. But that person suddenly disappeared in front of her, so she kept following Dagon for no reason. Era then thanks Dagon for saving him the other day, and he gives her his number so that he can help her out in the future as well. But she isn't happy with just that and makes Dagon take her home. Afterward, Davin returns to him and wonders why he keeps getting followed. Not just the school kids, but now he Jun, from a private agency, also has eyes on him. So Dagon figures that it all must come to the director. He remembers that he Jun told him not to trust the director. But then why would he say something like that? And what kind of relationship does he have with her? Thinking too much won't help him, so he proceeds to take a shower. The next day, Doyan curses Sung Hoon for taking his position at the Bully Violence Committee even though he is a bully. He wants to complain to Dagon about this, but then he sees that Dagon is already with Sung Hoon. A flashback shows Dagon walking Era back to her home. Dagon apologizes to her for getting her unknowingly involved when he fought against 20 men. Era recalls Jian belittling Dagon by calling him the worst of the worst and apologizes on her behalf but Dagon thinks that what Jillian said was right and tells her not to worry about it. 
Hera explains that Giant feels sorry for saying that too and hopes that he will wait for the day when she comes to him to apologize. Dagon isn't interested in any of that, and since Ered is from class 9, the class where only the top students get admitted, he asks if there are bullies in her class. Ered explains that whenever there's a problem, Sun Hoon, their class president, always steps up and talks down the guys, and everyone becomes gentle. She adds that Sun Hoon has leadership skills, so everyone listens to what he says, and that's why the atmosphere of the class remains really calm. So according to her, Sun Hoon is the bully repellent, Dagon thinks that maybe Sunghoon is not that bad after hearing what Eris said about him. Speaking of him, Sunghoon enters the room, wanting to talk with Dagon. Dagon tells Doyan that Sunghoon will do what he did from now on. Doyan thinks that Sunghoon is a bully, but he clarifies that he's not a bully but a leader like Dagon. Before letting Sunghoon join the team, Dagon asks him if he has collected any protection money. Sunghoon explains that he was forced to do bad things because of the other leaders, but now he is free from his shackles because of Dagon, and he thanks him for that. He wants Dagon to break the prejudice and wants to help him do that too. Dagon, completely manipulated by Sung Hoon's words, blindly begins trusting him and makes him the leader of the Bully Violence Committee. Before their mission of exterminating bullies begins, Sung Hoon calls every one of Dagon's allies to a meeting. He explains to them that they will now be joining his committee to catch all the bullies at the school. Everyone gets confused as Sun Hoon is supposed to be their potential enemy, so Dagon explains that they have become allies and want to destroy the rules of collecting money together. Sun Hoon tells him his plans to use his connections to beat whoever is collecting the protection money. He plans to become the gun for Dagon and promises to destroy the targets. But then again, a question arises as to why Sun Hoon showed up at the gym with the second graders when Dagon faced Dojin at the gym. Sung Hoon explains that he only came to hang out with the other class leaders and doesn't have any ulterior motives. Dagon doesn't want to continue this meeting anymore as he needs to head back to English, so he asks Sung Hoon to quickly tell him his plan. Sung Hoon reveals that if Dagon defeats the top of the food chain, Baek Su Hyuk, the third grader's leader, then he will be able to stop the money collection completely. However, he and the other third grade leaders are missing, so for now, they need to defeat all the second grade leaders. If they do so, they will surely get the attention of the third graders, and then all bullies will be exterminated. But before that, Dagon needs to finish all the first graders, and the only target left is Sungwa from class 7. Because Sungwa isn't known for bullying, Sunghoon reveals that he is indeed responsible for many eagle deeds in co-curricular activities. For example, he puts every first grader in a fight to test their sportsmanship, and to satisfy his own pathetic desires. According to Sun Hoon, Sun Woo refines his own skills by making people fight and analyzing their techniques. So Sun Hoon thinks that Sun Woo will come after Dagon next to get to know his skills. Later, Man Ho and his gang still can't believe that they must trust Sun Hoon, but for Dagon's sake, they decide to give him a shot. Meanwhile, Sun Hoon goes to meet one of the second grade leaders, revealing that he was never on Dagon's side to begin with. Susie sees a bundle of cash lying on the table and wonders where her brother is getting so much money. At the gym, Sun Wai is making the rookies fight for their lives. He takes note of all their moves and thinks this is all meaningless. His Kobali asks what's wrong as the new rookie, Iku, is performing better than before. Sun Wai doesn't explain and gathers his top 10 students in front of him, alongside Iku. He tells Iku that he has a special task for him and takes everyone to the top floor of an abandoned construction building. One of the students reports this to Sun Hoon, hoping that Dagon will come to put a stop to this. Sun Wa explains that Aiku will be getting beaten up by the 10 guys for his research. Meanwhile, Sun Hoon takes his leave from his fellow conspirators and calls Dagon to tell him what Sun Wei is up to. Of course, he only did this to look good in front of Dagon. Anyway, Doyan tells Manho about Dagon leaving in a rush to a construction site, so they decide to head there as well. Sun Hoon arrives there first but waits for Dagon to come first. He looks around and sees that Sun Wa is at another building, observing the beating of Iku. He reveals that he purposely made one of his lackeys tell Sun Hoon about this so that he could lure Dagon here. And he's successful, as Dagon comes there all alone. Dagon heads to the top floor while Sun Wai eagerly waits to see Dagon's skills for his research. Sun Hoon also heads to another roof and silently observes both sites. Dagon climbs the stairs to find that Aiku is getting beaten by 10 students. He asks where Sang Wai is, but after getting no answer, Dagon decides to beat the answer out of them. Sun Wa from another building reveals that he wants to sacrifice all his students so that he can learn all Dagon's skills 
and use them against him in the future. Another ex-leader named Sangbo, who got beaten by Dagon, comes to see the show. He hears everything that Sun was said and laughs, calling his tactic pure evil. Dagon's first opponent out of the gate, a boxer, steps up for the fight. Sun Wai explains the factors that one needs to be good at fighting. Normally, a person needs two things to fight. First, physicality is needed to get the power represented by muscular strength. Then, skills are needed to overpower the enemy by causing great damage with only one skilled attack. These two things utilize the body in fighting, but Sun Wai thinks there's one more thing needed for fighting, and that is information. For example, in boxing, a player's entire team collects data about the opponent before a game. Like their skills, weaknesses, habits, etc., then they analyze the data and study it to find the most effective way to defeat the opponent. Sun Wu thinks Sangbo doesn't know about this because he has never been in a boxing match and tells him that the only reason he lost to Dagon is because he lacked information. Sun Wu explains that while Sangbo was clueless about Dagon, Dagon learned everything that he needed to defeat him by getting information from Manho, hence he became the winner. But Sun Wu doesn't want to be clueless and that's the reason why he came up with all these shenanigans just to get information about Dagon so that he can win. But can he defeat a monster like Dagon? No one can say for sure. Meanwhile, Dagon analyzes his first opponent as an outboxer, seeing that he is keeping his distance, and makes a counterplan to defeat him. A low kick always works on an outboxer, so he goes with that and defeats him. Dagon originally thought that these ten wimps would be strong, but now, after defeating one of them, he thinks this would be a piece of cake. So Dagon doesn't waste any time and goes to beat every single one of them at once. His attacks are so fast that none of them can even be dodged. One of them even tries to hold Dagon, but he also gets thrown away by the monstrous power of Dagon. He uses his fists, his knuckles, and even his elbows to smash the opponents. With one person left, Sangbo wonders if Dagon is that strong or if Sung Wai's lackeys are just a bunch of weaklings. Sangwa explains that the last guy standing against Dagon is the strongest out of everyone, so he has a bit of hope. Anyway, the guy starts to move swiftly against Dagon, but even he is clearly no match against him. Meanwhile, Manho's team rushes to the place as Jongmin thinks that Sung Huan is up to no good and conspiring against Dagon. They see Sun Wai in another building, so they head there and run into Sangbo. Dagon asks the guy whom he has defeated about Sung Wai's location, but he claims to not know, so Dagon smashes his several times and asks again. Manho asks Sangbo if he is after Dagon, and Sangbo realizes that Manho has changed sides as he was once allies with him. He asks Manho if he doesn't have any pride since he chose to side with the person who beat him. Sangbo reveals that he is indeed on his way to murder Dagon and promises to make them his sandbags again. But this time, Manho is not afraid of him and makes him remember the day he received a low blow from him. Manho tells him that he is different out of school and doesn't bother using any weapons, but Jongmin remembers that they left their weapon bag at school. So Manho brings out his trusty pen to use it against Sangbo and tells his team to go look for Dagon. Sung Hoon sees everything from the top and enjoys the free entertainment. Sangbo confidently kicks Manho and immediately shows that he is much stronger than him. Manho barely blocks a few blows but keeps getting punched repeatedly. He tries to stab Sangbo with his pen but fails as he cannot match his speed with him. Sung Hoon doesn't understand why Manho is attacking with his pen in that manner. As both fighters have reached, Sangbo's punches touch him before he can use his pen. Manho realizes this too and he remembers how Dagon attacks Sangbo, so he changes his strategy and uses a low kick on Sangbo. Although Sangbo barely feels the kick, he notices that he has wound marks all over his fist. Manho reveals that this happened because of the several watches that he is wearing. Sangbo gets enraged and begins to toy with Manho for his petty tricks. Meanwhile, Jongmin and Hojin go to where Sun Wai is but don't see Dagon anywhere. So Jongmin tries to contact Dagon by calling him, but before he can do that, Sung Wu's right hand, Cha, knocks him out instantly and kicks Ho Jung Wei next. Ho Jung asks what they are up to, but Cha knocks him out before he can get the answer. Manho barely stands against Sangbo, so he tries to use a dirty trick against him and kicks him with his sharp boots, making him feel unbearable pain. With that dirty move, Manho wins the fight, but he can no longer move his body. He worries if his friends will be okay without him. Dagon sees Manho sitting there and asks him what is going on. Sun Wai is shocked to see that Manho has won against Sangbo. He looks back to see that Che is still struggling to knock out Ho Jung, 
No matter how many times Che kicks him, he still stands. Of course, Ho Jung is only giving his all so that he can send one message to Dagon about this. But before he can do that, Sun Wa hits him with a suplex and knocks him out. Jong Min wakes up again and tries to contact Dagon, so Che goes after him to knock him out once again. But before he can land his kick, Sung Hoon comes out of nowhere and takes out Cha. He asks Jong Min why he came here, as he doesn't recall calling him here and reminds him that he's only holding them back. Dagon comes there too, carrying Nan Ho on his shoulders, and comes face to face with Sun Wei. Sun Wa honestly reveals what he was up to all along, telling Dagon that his plan was to lure him into a fight so that he could get information about his skills. But as his plan failed, he didn't have enough information on Dagon, so he decided to leave. But Dagon isn't going to let Sun Wei leave so easily, so Sun Wei wants to at least change their fighting location. Meanwhile, the second grader, Gong Young, comes to Ja Hawk's base, telling him that he has sent the protection feed to the third grade leader, Baek Su Hyuk. But the problem is that he couldn't meet him directly and gave the money to an errand boy named Su Hyuk. The others in the room want to use the rest of the protection money for their pleasures, but Gong Yang can't let them do that because of Dagon. Jajil isn't scared of Dagon at all, even though Ja Ha considered him a literal demon. He is more concerned about the errand boy and assumes that Dagon will come for all the second graders alone, and that would bring his doom. Another second grade leader, Samuel, enters the room to join in on the discussion. Gong Nian gets the news that Dayton is fighting Sung Wa currently. So they root for Sung Wa to win, hoping he will get rid of the nuisance Dagon. On the other side, Sung Wa keeps talking about his grappling technique and his stupid theory, so Dagon throws his slippers at his face to make his mouth shut. His provocation works, as Sung Wa takes a judo stance to fight. He dashes towards Dagon, faking a left punch, and goes for a tackle. But then he fakes the tackle too, so that he can land an overhand hook on Dagon. But Dagon, being Dagon, dodges all the attacks. Dagon wonders why he is striking instead of grappling, as he claimed to be a grappling-type wrestler. Sun Wa tries to kick Dagon and swings his fists at him, but Dagon easily evades everything. Cha regains consciousness and reveals that Sun Wa is good at MMA and has also mastered both striking and grappling. But it doesn't matter, as Sun Wa is the side character, whereas Dagon is the overpowered main character. Susie gets a message from her brother, Su Hyuk, who tells her that he can't come home tonight. So Susie decides to invite someone home, and by someone, she means none other than Dagon. Dagon lands a strong punch on the face of Sun Wa, but he stands up again, saying that he knows he can't beat Dagon just by hitting him. He tells him that his specialty is ground and that from the ground, he has built his skills for the past nine years. The more shocking thing for everyone is that Sun Wa is a year older than them which makes it clear why he has connections with the second year students. But there's no handicap, as Dagon is secretly much older than him. Jong Min thinks that Dagon looks at least two years older than them, but Dagon explains that he only grew like that because of constant exercise and calcium intake. Anyway, Dagon gets back to fighting Sun Wa after that short break and gives him a handicap by giving him space for the necessary movements. But when Sun Wa prepares to attack, Davin interferes midway and slams him on the floor. Sunwa finds a way to use this opportunity and uses a technique called armbar against Dagon. But Dagon remains unaffected and proceeds to punch hard with his left fist. Still, Sunwa doesn't let go of his hand, so Dagon kicks him with his knees. This time, Sunwa is forced to move away, and he commends Dagon's technique. So Sunwa shows his real skill, which is jujitsu, and uses a submission technique called the Inamari Roll on Dagon. But Dagon is so strong that he makes Sun Wu fly away with a simple kick. Sun Hoon realizes that Dagon just showed a glimpse of his true powers and commends him for that. Sun Wu again gets up, saying he has all the information he needs and claiming to be more skilled than Dagon. He proceeds to tackle Dagon, but then fakes it again and comes for a punch. Dagon evades the punch and counters perfectly with his own punch. He keeps on countering all Sun Wu's moves, but fails to knock him out. Jong Min asks why Sun Wu keeps punching if he specializes in ground techniques. Sun Hoon explains that in order to use the ground technique, he must first pull Dagon down to the ground, which is not looking easy. Sun Wu keeps trying to grab Dagon desperately, but he fails and keeps getting thrashed left and right. Jong Min realizes that Sun Wu is purposely getting hit, thinking he will win if he manages to pull Dagon down to the ground once, and Sun Wu manages to do so using a jujitsu move called guard position. He welcomes Dagon to the ground, claiming to have the upper hand now. On the other side, Susie gets a call from Ji Seok, 
who wants to meet with her right now. Dagon keeps on punching Sunwa to get himself free from his constriction, while Sunwa waits for the opportunity to complete his skill by slowly breaking Dagon's balance. He grabs Dagon's collar and then his elbow, then uses his left leg to immobilize Dagon's left hand. He looks for the perfect moment to grab Dagon's other hand, but Dagon frees himself from his grip as he is much stronger than him. Sunwa tries to kick him away, but Dagon isn't going to let him go anymore, which makes him regret using jujitsu against him. He repeatedly throws heavy blows to the nose, making Sunwa bleed badly. Zhang Min again wonders how Dagon is winning against Sunwa's skills. So Sung Hoon again explains to him that Dagon's physical strength is making all the other skills meaningless. And right now, Dagon is oppressing Sung Hwa with his physical strength and not with any techniques. He then explains that Dagon figured out Sung Hwa's jujitsu technique midway through and quickly cut off the skill. After, Sun Hwa moved his head fast like a boxing ball to evade Dagon's punches, but he still hit him accurately. So Sung Hoon thinks that Dagon's instincts are like a guided missile that can tear apart everything. Sunwa, before getting knocked out completely, remembers when he was bullied by kids of the same age for looking much older than them. He was much stronger than his peers, but he intentionally took their hits as he was a pushover. His older sister, Yanwa, always came to save him and made him go to the same MMA gym she used to go to teach him self-defense. He impressed everyone with his innate talents, but his sister wasn't impressed and kept pushing him to his limits. He became thirsty for more experience and skills and slowly used people's information to build a strong, solid skill tower. But today, all of it was destroyed by Dagon. Sunwar regains consciousness to find himself still being beaten by Dagon. He tries his best again to fight back, but to no avail. After knocking him out again, Dagon leaves with his friends while Che waits for Sunwa to regain consciousness. When he does, Sunwa claims to finally have meaningful information on Dagon. Meanwhile, Jongmin and Ho Jing mock Sun Hwa for acting all tough while walking home. Man Ho congratulates Dagon on winning against all the first graders and announces that Dagon will be the only first grade leader from now on. Sun Hoon reminds Dagon that this is just the beginning, as he needs to defeat the second graders as well. Su Joy and her friends see Jizyuk walking in the distance while hanging out and wonder what handsome guy like Kim is doing here. Ji Seok is apparently here to meet Suzy and runs into Sun Hoon. Since he is going to her house, Sung Hoon assumes that Suzy is home alone and asks if they are dating. But Jizuk explains that they are only childhood close friends and that he is only going to her place to hang out. Sung Hoon smiles, learning that they are close, and tells Jizuk to learn where Bak Suyuk is right now. He then asks more about Suzy and what she likes and dislikes. Jizuk doesn't want to say anything about her, so Sung Hoon threatens him, telling him to do what he is told if he doesn't want any harm. Two girls approach Jizyuk, asking him what he is doing here. Suzy approaches them, asking him why he is with two other girls. He explains that he just ran into them and that they are not with him. The two girls, upon seeing Suzy, start complaining to her. Suzy doesn't take that lightly, and she goes to teach them a lesson. But Jizyuk stops her and takes her away in the opposite direction to avoid the unnecessary fight. He asks Suzy where her brother Suyuk is, but even she doesn't know his whereabouts and assumes that he will return in a month. Suzy brings out which is the more important matter to her, telling Jizyuk to never go against Dagon. Jizyuk realizes that Suzy likes Dagon, and it breaks his heart, but she denies it completely while blushing heavily. Jizyuk then tells her that she doesn't need to worry for Dagon as he has become the only leader of the first grade, making her blush even more. Minsu, the guy who was the first school friend of Dagon, reveals that he is a spy sent by Director Lee. He calls Lee to tell her what Dagon did recently and gives her another undisclosed piece of intel. The next day, the news spreads around the entire school that Dagon has become the first grade leader. Some of the students even become jealous of him and begin to badmouth him behind his back. Doingan tries to write on the blackboard the news of Dagon becoming the leader, but Dagon tells him to erase it right away. Doingan congratulates him, but Dagon isn't interested in that and looks for Sung Hoon. Everyone keeps coming to congratulate him, which makes him very irritated. Dagon asks Sung Hoon where Manho is and learns that he is taking a day off for the pain he went through last night while fighting Sambo. Suzy enters the room, mocking Dagon for being only a first grade leader. Although she is very happy for him, she can't show it as she is the supposed queen of first grade. Dagon completely ignores her existence, so she pulls his shirt to get his attention and accidentally exposes his bare chest. That makes her more flustered, 
but she still tells him that it's a tradition to greet the queen after becoming a leader. Sung Moon corrects her by saying that the true tradition is to greet the second and third grade leaders. So Susie explains that he still should, as he is the first grade king, and she is the first grade queen. Susie then hesitantly asks for his number, but after getting no response from Dagon, she forces him to give it. Sung Hoon tells Dagon that he should meet with the seniors and reminds him to play nicely this time and not pick a fight. So Dagon heads to the second grade hallway to greet the seniors. He enters class one's room and sees that they are taking drugs, getting high, and forcing an innocent classmate to. Dagon doesn't like that at all, as these guys are still minors, and starts beating them up one after another. He even knocks out the class one leader, Jagel, and says hi after that. After knocking the leader of the class, Jagel, out who is also one of the leading members of the middle of the road team, Dagon asks the other drug addicts if they want a taste of him as well. But before they can answer, Dagon begins to beat them up. A bald one attacks him, but Dagon knocks him out too. He realizes that all of them are middle of the road members as all their heads are shaved. Jadel finally stands up, asking Dagon if he even knows who he is. Dagon knows exactly who Jagel is, so Dagon looks at his phone for information and begins to describe Jagel as a money collector who commits extortion and assaults. Dagon then asks why he collected money and drags Jagel's head against the wall for not listening to him. After knocking him out, Dagon asks the guy who was being forced to take drugs if he is feeling okay now. But the guy has no idea what to say after seeing such a dramatic event. Sangsu, the partner of Jagel, comes to the room and sees that he is being beaten up by Dagon. So he brings out a blade cutter to welcome him. But before Sangsu can stab Dagon, he uses a chair to block his attack and then proceeds to beat him as well. The other students see the humiliating battle of a senior being thrashed by a senior. The word spread quickly about how Dagon is greeting his seniors. Meanwhile, Songun also walks towards the second grader's doorway. He thinks that going against senior is impossible, as even a monster like Su Yu couldn't do it, because it's risky for an individual to turn an entire school into an enemy. But now it seems possible for Sung Goon to change the school's rules by making Dagon do all the work. He sees unconscious bodies everywhere and feels glad that Dagon is breaking the food chain while making it showy. The second graders keep coming at Dagon, thinking that they are the predators here, but little do they know that they are the prey of the bully in charge. Dagon paves the path by beating up everyone along the way and enters class 2 this time. After taking out everyone from class 2, he then heads to class 3 to take out the next leader, Samuel. He beats more people along the way, and he uses dirty techniques like manhole for fun. Dagon looks for Samuel, but since he doesn't show himself, he takes out his anger on the others. One of the lackeys quickly messages Gong Liang about Dagon beating them up. Dagon notices that of course and realizes that things would become easier if all the second grade leaders came here at once. So he tells the bald guy to tell everyone to come here. Meanwhile, Minsu reports to Director Lee that Dagon has made his move to take out the second graders. He then tells Lee that the second graders have become a strong alliance with a single goal, and that is to murder Dagon. All the second grade leaders enter the class 3 room and are warmly welcomed by Dagon. Gong Nang asks Dagon if he is crazy as he is trying to take on all the second graders alone, and he most probably is. A flashback from the previous day shows Sung Hoon telling Dagon that he should take over the second grade tomorrow, because he needs to imprint his presence on the entire school as soon as he can. Dagon thinks for a while, as this is such a cliche idea, a transfer student showing up, taking over classes and becoming the strongest. But one thing isn't so cliche about Dagon, according to Sung Hoon, as Dagon doesn't show off all his power and rather hides most of his strengths. It seems to Sung Hoon that Dagon purposely matches his opponent's level to play with them. So he thinks that Dagon doesn't want to be a leader and has another purpose, and that purpose could be that Dagon holds a grudge against the bullies or worse, that he is on a secret mission. Dagon stops Sung Hoon from going any further with his analysis. Seeing Dagon's sudden reaction, Sung Moon realizes that his assumptions are true but doesn't budge too much as they share the same goal of crushing the bullies. Sung Hoon then writes a list of all the second grade leaders' names and details on Dagon's phone and tells him that he should crush them all the next day. So that explains why Dagon is trying to eliminate all the leaders at once. Gong Nang thinks that Dagon has been possessed by Satan and decides to ward off the evil spirits by beating him up. He sends his lackeys towards Dagon but he blocks the way using a baldy as a human shield. With the lackeys completely thrown off, Dagon then proceeds to beat them one by one. More of the second graders try to get in, but Dagon shoves them off with his sheer power. None of them can even get close to Dagon, let alone scratch him. 
Dagon even jabs three bullies at once and keeps knocking out anyone that comes at him. Gonmyong realizes that he's an actual uncontrollable monster after seeing his techniques to cope with any situation and wonders how a person can be so monstrous. Even if 10 people come to Dagon, the results are the same. Gonmyong realizes it's up to him to stop Dagon, and he brings out a blade cutter to stab him. Manho gets the news that Dagon is fighting with all the second graders, so he and his friends rush to go help him. Suzy wants to help Dagon too, so she heads there with her punching bag Mr. Fatso. Gongmyong finally faces Dagon and sees a glimpse of an actual monster. He takes his glasses off, and that makes Dagon think that he is asking for them. So he one punches Gongmyong away, flying, and knocks him out. Manho and the team reach there to see that the fight is already over. But Dagon sees that he needs to beat one other leader from the second grade, and that is Jahak. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, give a like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.